Google Pixel is here, the 9 Pro XL. We've been waiting for this for a long time. We had our first exclusive look in California at Google HQ, but now we're at India Today HQ, Tech Today headquarters with the new Google Pixel. Now, of course, there's a lot that's happening on the hardware front, but the real magic is what's happening with Android on the software front. That's what we're gonna check and test in this special video on Tech Today. There you go, the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Let's give you our initial impressions having used this device for a couple of days, especially since getting back from California. Now, if you look at the design, this is a true successor to the Pixel 8 Pro, 6.8 inches, and I think that's where the similarities begin. But there's a similarity with an other company which is launching their new iPhones very soon. It looks so much like a 15 Pro Max, especially if you hold it at a distance. A lot of people have been thinking, is this the new iPhone? No, it's not. Because if you look at the camera design, the original Pixels had a very distinct camera design. That's changed as well with this one. It's not connected to the side anymore. The overall look and feel is very premium. Of course, it comes at a premium price tag as well. But what about the display? That's something you'd really be concerned about. Now, it has to be said, this is a very vivid display. It's a 6.8 inch super actual display with 3000 nits of peak brightness, Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection. If you're talking about the content that you're viewing on this, it looks pretty good with that 3000 nits of peak brightness. If you're viewing it outdoors in the sun as well, the Pixel 9 Pro XL does a fairly decent job. Now, in a flagship like this, you're gonna look at the camera. And even if you go back to the first Pixels, since time immemorial, they've done a fantastic job with even lesser cameras, they managed so much more with AI, much before AI was a thing. With this particular one, if we're talking about specs, this comes with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, and a 48 megapixel telephoto with 5x optical zoom. Now, it also has a 42 megapixel selfie camera, and as it is every year, the performance is great. Here's a few camera samples from the device. You can see that the images are super detailed and the processing makes them look even better than the viewfinder. But that processing can take some time. It's not as instant as on an iPhone and that can be disappointing at times as well. Now, one thing Google was telling us in California is night sight. The Pixel's always been good with low light photography, but this time it comes with 20x super res zoom in night sight video or video boost. It combines details from the upgraded telephoto camera and advanced machine learning to add rich details. Now at the big made by Google event, the one feature that I was demoing as well was Add Me, which is super cool. I thought this was a gimmick until I tried it out for myself and we've been trying it here at Tech Today HQ as well. If you've taken a photo of one person and then that person who has taken the photo wants to be a part of that photo as well. Using all sorts of complex AI algorithms, they do a nearly perfect job stitching the two photos together. You can see some samples right there. This is one of the coolest features, not just a party trick. This really gets the job done. Add me on the new Google Pixel lineup. But I think Google wanted to beat even Apple to the launch of the Pixel. That's why they advanced the date and they wanted to talk about AI, AI and a whole lot of AI. This could have been called a Google Gemini phone because there's so much of AI on this particular device. They have Magic Editor, which lets you do all sorts of cool things with your photos. And then Pixel Studio is something that honestly seems like the strongest product in the AI race. When you compare it with Galaxy AI or what the other companies are doing, this one with the demos that we've seen and the stuff that we've been doing using text prompts, the kind of output, the images that you get is absolutely mind-blowing. It's still a work in progress. It's not working on humans yet, but they've done a fairly decent job when you want to play around with backgrounds or particular situations. And how did Google really integrate what they've been doing with DeepMind, especially with Gemini, Gemini Live, is Google's answer to chat GPT 4.0. And honestly, a very usable answer from the animations that they're using to the voices that they're using and the accuracy of the outputs, everything works. It seems like a product ready to take on what Apple wants to do with AI, definitely better than what the others are doing with AI. The only real competitor to what Apple intelligence will give us on high-end iPhones is perhaps what they're doing with the Pixel on Gemini Live. Of course, this, like any other AI feature, is a work in progress, but then there's Pixel Screenshots. This is definitely not a party trick, it's a game changer. If you're like me and you take quick screenshots of everything you're doing online, on Instagram, things you wanna buy later as well, perhaps this is the new solution. It's a new app 
You take that screenshot and it pulls all the data out of that screenshot, even if it's a coupon code that you want to use later. All of that will then be put in this app, which looks like a new notes app. And then you can refer to it like a page in your scrapbook and then use those links and all that data that it's pulled out as well. A very useful feature, which I think if Google opens up to the rest of the Android world, we'll see a lot of these smartphone manufacturers rushing to take ownership of it. That is coming on the Pixel 9 Pro XL and it works like a charm. In terms of the battery, it comes with a 5060 mAh battery, which is good enough for a day of usage, but it's really what's under the hood with that Tensor G4 chipset. Now, is that as good as Apple Silicon? It most definitely is not. Is it as good as what Qualcomm's doing with Snapdragon or some of the MediaTek processors? That's something we want to really figure out with benchmarks, but I don't think Google's made this for benchmarks. It's about how the Pixel device really performs. It's about being independent, self-sufficient, and that they have started with Tensor already. Now, the real problem is the price. In India, this is 1,25,000 rupees for this device. It's great if you are a true blue pixel lover and you understand what this device can give you, but at 1,25,000 rupees, you're creeping into absolute premium flagship territory. The Pixel Fold is something we're very excited about, but if you look at this pricing and you add maybe 10, 15,000 rupees more, you could get a OnePlus Open as well. So I think that, like always, is something that is disappointing, especially when it comes to India pricing. But if you understand what a Google Pixel stock Android experience can give you, then it might just be the option for you.